Hey, welcome back to the channel. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, go ahead and comment. Let me know where y'all from and who you a fan of. Let's get right into it. Let's get it started, man. So, hey, Jay Prince and Offset got into a heated exchange because Jay Prince Jr. called his dad and told him that he want to go down to the next Atlanta Hawk game. And once Offset immediately heard that, he made sure to tell his homies to let him know that Jay Prince Jr. is going to have to probably check in in Atlanta, just like how they expect people to check in in Houston. And so because they had a rocky relationship uh, amongst Jay Prince, uh, the dad and Offset, because you know how they was going at each other, going live. And basically, Jay Prince was talking about uh, saying a whole lot of things he did at, at Offset, like he ain't, he ain't they not cool no more. They really wasn't and how they're no longer like they don't respect each other or anything like that. And so that's what's going on. That's why, um, you know, they had their back and forth. That's why you've been seeing in the headlines recently. And then now that they want to go to Atlanta Hawks game, Offset already had to deal with the fact that Quavo was sitting right next to him at the Hawks game. And what's he going to do having Quavo trying to sit next to him and then Jay Prince Jr. literally on the other side? Like now he's surrounded by the people that basically were there in the part of the downfall of takeoff. Whether you, you know, whether they did it or not, they were there. They were there, right there and there. They're all witnesses to everything. And neither one of them is basically helping out and to get in the justice for takeoff. Because first of all, Quavo, if he says anything, then he's going to get into a lot of trouble from Jay Prince Jr. and his dad because they going to, you know, basically say that Quavo snitched on them because they know that he's one of the witnesses that's going to be on takeoff side. And then on the other hand, Jay Prince Jr. was right there too. And his people was yelling and arguing and everything with Quavo, but he's seen everything that happened. He even walked by takeoff, but didn't even want to look at him. And so that's another person you got there. And it's like, he saw what happened. So he don't want to go up and snitch on his homies or whatever. DJ Pat must be one of his homies because they keep him around the group. They be feeding him. They be giving him more DJ jobs. They put money in his pocket. So don't act like they not best friends. They all are part of the same clique and entourage. And so because people are saying that if you was to draw and connect the dots, yeah, DJ Pat gets paid directly from mob ties and everything. So you could pinpoint the dots together. And a lot of people was already talking about how if they looked into it and if it was like a Rico or something, it would be an easy case because of the fact that it's already literally proven and on paperwork that that dude works for them. And so he's working for him at that time. This is an on the job related situation. Like he DJed that birthday party. That's why he was there, actually. And so whoever came with them, whoever dropped them off and everything like that, they trying to figure out who it was that the dude showed up with in that dark Escalade. Because one thing everybody got to know is that you don't no one's really popping up alone like that, especially when you got an entourage that deep. It was 40 people in that party and Jay Prince Jr. and Quavo know exactly everybody that was there. But neither one of them want to come out and speak. And both of them are on opposite sides of who the people was that got hit up and who the people was that got in trouble. And when you really look at it. Offset's looking at this situation like looking at Quavo like I can't believe you let this happen and then after all that you want to come and let them try to sit next to us in the season ticket holding seats for the Hawks game it's like why don't why don't Jay Prince Jr. and them just go to a Rockets game why do they want to have to come to the Atlanta Hawks game and that's when you think it oh they trying to rub it in their faces they trying to show themselves around and their city it make it seem like there's nothing that they could do about it and that they got enough power to be able to come into day hood and all that and not have to check in and just keep rubbing it in their face of everything that's been happening so far and how they haven't got justice for takeoff or anything. And they just sitting there gloating about it, basically saying, you know, they can't be touched. You can't stop us from going to no games. Nobody's looking for us. The fans are not going to catch us. They're not going to find us. And so they're just doing a whole bunch of that. And it's really making Offset feel some type of way because he's looking at it like, man, they're trying to put salt in the womb. Like it's already bad enough that he had to deal with losing takeoff. It's already bad enough. And condolences to the families. RIP to takeoff. I know a lot of y'all are takeoff fans. And you're going to comment down below too. But basically, after all that that he's been through and, you know, it's like, okay, now y'all want to throw salt in the womb by 
adding all this extra showboating and gloating and trying to come out to Atlanta and sit courtside and and get on the TV, get on the jumbotron and and throw up your your set and everything like that. It's not cool because y'all just making a lot of people feel like, oh, they just come in here to play a joke or play a game on us. Like they don't really think this takeoff situation is serious. Like people feel like they actually looked up to takeoff and takeoff was a real one compared to Quavo and them, like compared to all of these dudes that ended up being, it's like, how is it that all these dudes get to walk around doing whatever they want and takeoff is the realest one out of all of them, but he's the one that's gone, man. That's the craziest situation. It'd be like the worst people that they get to get out of really bad situations. And then it's like the best people always end up falling in those or something like that. Or, you know, the good always go young. A lot of people know that the good always go young. You see it all the time in the movies. You see it in real life. You see it in, in all sorts of different things. And takeoff is just another one of those. And everybody else around them, it's like they're not changing their ways. They're not doing anything different. They really don't care. It doesn't affect them the same way because they've already basically chosen the mentality that they're going to have in life. And they don't care. This is just a part of it. You know, they they understand that people are going to fall and all that. And, you know, that's why they don't want to never have to even like, okay, well, it don't matter if you're a good guy or a bad guy. That's how they think. And they're like, well, good guys is going to get hit up anyways, too. And... Yeah, they just want to keep increasing like the level of power and influence they have over people. They like the control and everything like that. That's why they all, you know, people, when they always, something comes up, it's always like Jay Prince comes and speaks on it or somebody's chain, something happens. And the next thing you know is the Prince family who gets it back. So they definitely like to involve themselves in a lot of like power, political situations. So everything is really like, if you look at it, it's a lot of uh, black and white. It's a lot of paperwork behind what they do. It's a lot of whole... Um, you know, OGs getting together and they had to talk it out. But it's like that ain't happening with the takeoff situation. They going on the podcast and they da 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 telling it it was Boosie's fault about the dice game. And Boosie came out and he's like, I don't know why they even said my name in that. Stop saying my name when y'all speaking on a whole open case situation. Leave me out of it. That's why Boosie was surprised because he thought that they was the type of people that wasn't going to come out and say nothing. Because that's just not how it rolls. Like, if you looked at every little situation they've been, they never been the ones that needed to speak up because they know the most. So if they say anything is real, you know that there's going to be some real, like, truth behind it. And so they don't want to be known for snitching or revealing any information that don't need to be revealed. And so now Boosie's like, how is it that they going away from doing that to now they mentioning me by name, putting me in times and certain places where... Uh, crimes happened and people got uh, like sent up and everything like the Duke the jeweler they literally tried to pin that on Boosie saying it was his fault and that it was his dice game and it was his concert and everything and they trying to like you know be uh, basically deny any involvement in it like they weren't even there but the cameras and the people that was there they know what happened everybody was there and that's why they can't hide from that they can only try to twist up and change the story and the narrative to try to fit it into something that makes them look a lot more favorable but you know yeah a lot of people was wondering why would they even come out and speak on the takeoff situation if it's still an open thing and it's literally people that work for you that's locked up behind this taking the the charges and whatnot and it's like leave that alone let the professionals handle it and everything so they can figure it out but they want to have that control of the narrative to know that, hey, if people are saying this or even speaking on it, they want they want to uh, let them know, okay, well, don't look at us. Go look at Boosie. He did this and that and just trying to divert from it. And if anything, they should have came out and said that they don't have no comments on it and that they just going to let the people who's handling it handle it. And that if they are innocent, they could just say, you know, we ain't, we ain't know nothing. We ain't wasn't a part of nothing. And that's our story. We stick into it. But instead, it was a weird little like they was trying to over explain a lot of stuff and they was trying to bring in other situations that weren't really tied to it. So they could make it seem like, well, what this other time when this happened, it wasn't us. It was this guy. And like that changes anything for the for takeoff. It really doesn't change nothing for takeoff because the people you was talking about with the Boosie situation weren't at the takeoff situation like Boosie wasn't at the takeoff. So you can't blame Boosie or his people for that when they weren't even at the second one. The first one, yeah, you could say, oh, yeah, Boosie cousin, this, this, and that, and a lot of people that was there. The second one is all mob ties. It's all J. Prince Jr.'s people. There's none. 
nobody um, Boosie side is there. Only the people that was there from the from the mob ties and the J Prince side from earlier. And so it's like they can't blame nobody else. They it's, it was all their own group. So they got to realize that they should have never spoke on it. So that way they could just make it seem like, oh, you know, anyone that did nothing wrong isn't going to have nothing to speak on it because they just go and let it play out. And then all in the end, everybody's going to know. And it's like, well, I had to go on Gilly the, uh, Gilly the Kid podcast, like as if that's the end all be all of the whole entire thing. Like not not everybody's going to be able to see that. So if they really wanted to get out there and make the announcement, they should have just went on the news. If they would have just went on the news and said it, it would have got to a lot more people. They would have ran the story with the whole investigative journalism. But they went on Gilly the Kid because they just want to prove to the rap community because that's all who really is paying attention to the situation because that's where they're getting all their bread from. They want to be able to, you know, tell the culture and the whole hip hop community um, to keep messing with them and keep bringing bread in with them. And so that's really why they came out onto that, because they know that everybody from the industry is going to see it so that they keep rocking with them. And so with all that, man, comment down below. Let me know what y'all think about this whole situation and subscribe to the channel, like this video, and I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Peace.